I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Yes or no, did you ever take banned substances to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. I had no prior knowledge of the planned assault on Nancy Kerrigan. I am deeply sorry for my irresponsible and selfish behavior I engaged in. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Oops! The Podcast. I am Julio, joined by Francis. Hey. Francis, how you doing? Hey, you know, I, I got to tell you, I've been good. Good. I've been very good. Feeling good? And it's not even that things are good. It's just that I feel like my perspective is getting better and better, and I'm, I'm starting to um, be more appreciative of my life. Good. Good, man. Fantastic. I get to hang out with a lot of people who aren't, and that helps. They are not happy with their lives? Yeah. <laughs> Comedians. Oh, yeah. I've been having sort of uh, very, I don't know, almost assuming the role of therapist without anyone asking me to do that. Yeah. With comedian friends of mine. And, uh, and then by having these conversations, I hear what they're going through in the way they see life. And uh, it, it, it really is, a I don't want to say a cautionary tale for me, but it makes me realize, oh, you know. Yeah. You got to just, I don't know. As I've said to you before, I think it's, it's much more important to put your, um, your worth and your sense of self to judge it more off of your family and your, the people you love rather than your, what, how you're doing professionally. Yeah. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Dude, listen, like, and it, you know, it's unfortunate when you have to kind of like compare yourself to something much shittier to feel good. But I don't think that that's like wrong. And like, I, you know, it, you don't want that. But mm -hmm. hey, if that's the silver lining mm -hmm. behind you being like, damn, these people are troubled. Yeah. You know, it could yeah. be a nice, uh, a nice, yeah, nice silver lining. Just that. Well, just to find, you know, and to find out that, th that things are going great. Yeah. For me personally, even if I may be be theoretically behind some of these people professionally. Yeah, but you're also ahead of a lot of them professionally, too. And that's the other thing I've been noticing, too. It's like comedy's so weird because it's like a rare thing where you can kind of be at the same, quote, level as somebody else. And like they have to do shit they hate to make ends meet. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like there's a lot of maneuvering in that way. And I encourage anybody who's like doing comedy for a little bit or is going to start. Try to like think, is this a way that I can maybe make some money someday? Because like ideally you don't want to have to do other stuff right? if you don't have to, you know what I mean? So I feel grateful in that regard. Mm. Um, well, um, I wanted to, uh, actually I don't have anything yet, but I will think of something. <laughs> yeah, I have something that I think you'll oh, enjoy. Oh, great. All right. So remember how I used to do that class with the, the greatest fitness instructor of all time, Move With Molly? Yeah, sure. Who has moved the on. The one whose body you wanted. I want her. I want to have her body. Yes, she's unfortunately moved with Molly on to something else. I don't know what she's doing yet. She's she's planning to announce it. I am eagerly awaiting mm. the announcement. Um, however, there's a new person teaching the class now, and he's this little, uh, like Latino guy, and he is super feisty. Mm. And dude, it's so funny what like how he treats me during the class. Mm -hmm. Like I'm typically the only guy in the class and I don't know if maybe he can tell that I'm a good sport and that's why he does this. But like, I'll be in the middle of doing my stuff. He's like super intense. Like let's go squat, let's squat. Like that, you know, and he'll walk up to me and just stand and look at me and just shake his head and disapproval at me. Oh, <laughs> really? Goes, Dude, oh he's done God. it to me back to back classes. And <laughs> Last time I just started laughing out loud because it was so <laughs> insane. Like I was doing this like exercise where you're like pressing dumbbells like for a minute. So I was using like a lighter weight than I guess he would have liked me to have been using. And he came over to me and he made like an eyebrow sarcastic face to me and just went. Pfft. I was like, dude, are you fucking serious? This is exactly what you're not supposed to do in a workout class. Yeah. This is the opposite of what you're supposed to do in a workout class. Dude, I got to tell you, laughter is the ultimate <laughs> um, workout stopper. Yeah, it is, true. It is impossible to <laughs> exercise through laughter. It's impossible. It, it, it's hard to continue having sex through laughter, but it is impossible to keep keep your competitive 
edge and spear it up if you're laughing. Or even just to like complete a rep. It's impossible. Yeah. It's literally impossible. Dude, I um I was thinking somehow it's amazing <laughs> that you brought this up. I was thinking the other day about how um I, I had this weird flashback memory, I don't even know why, to playing college lacrosse and practices where I would start laughing. I would start laughing at things. <laughs> and you can't run full speed when you're laughing. You can't keep your focus together, you know? You feel drunk when you're exercising and you're <laughs> laughing laughing really hard. But these were my friends on the team, and inevitably someone would say something or someone would fall or maybe right. someone would be really hungover in practice, something funny that you'd see someone puke, whatever it was, <laughs> and I'd start laughing. And I distinctly remember laughing more than other people on the team while we were supposed to be focused and i think that was why a lot of people did not like me that much on the lacrosse team really yeah you were a polarizing figure on the lacrosse team um early on yeah because they were they didn't think that i took it seriously enough interesting yeah i will say this man when you have a good laugh bro when you're like laughing it's a it's nice like everybody's yeah. enjoying themselves. especially especially in like a helmet <laughs> If you're wearing a helmet and you're laughing, you feel like the whole, it's just echoing off. You're all you're in your own bubble. You know what does a lacrosse helmet look like? Um, it's it's a, sort of a cross between a football helmet and a and a hockey helmet. That's I right. guess there's like a there's, there's a, a cage face right, mask. Okay, yeah. but it's like a hockey helmet but with a cage. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That yeah, dude, our helmets were sick. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. I could go get mine. Do you want to see it? Sure. Eh, I'll get it after the episode. I do. What I do want to see is your fucking guns, dude. Oh, where's the tape measure? Let me. All right, I'll get the tape measure. I think it's it's right over there. But um, I gotta give you an update on my guns. Is it in a drawer? Mm, maybe, maybe not. Maybe I'll go get it upstairs. Okay, okay. I don't. I don't know. I thought it was on this. Uh... We have to update. Dude, the the here. Get this, man. So you know how I've been taking the the pill form of creatine. Yeah, because it's just easier for me to swallow it. Yeah. So it's like micronized capsules. Well, you could just take a powder, oh, okay. mix it into a drink or whatever. Um, but but get this. So I assumed that each capsule, the, the recommended daily dose of creatine is five grams. Okay. I assumed each capsule was 2.5 grams because it said, I think it said something like a serving was 2.5 grams. But get this. I... <laughs> I, 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 it, the, then it said that the serving size was two pills, but I didn't realize this. So I've been taking half the amount that I've been supposed to be taking. Oh, wow. So I've been underserving myself. How'd you find this out? I finally looked at the nutrition facts again. Did you go, I would have loved to have seen your reaction. Did you go, what? Yeah, I was, the- I, I, <laughs> I thought to myself, you know, I'm not seeing a whole lot of growth in my pythons. And this explains why I'm underfeeding the pythons. You have not fed the pythons properly. Yeah. But now I'm nervous to up the dose to the full amount. Why? Have you been feeling any different? I had a little bit of a stomach issue for a couple of days. When you started? No, not when I started. Mm. About a week and a half in. Interesting. My stomach started feeling very um, crampy. Mm. Not like gassy or anything like that just right. like i had knots in my stomach it was really uncomfortable for three days interesting and uh i looked it up they say that that's not typically a a, a side effect really of, of creatine but more a side effect of if you're dehydrated on account of the creatine uh, but i have been drinking enough water how much water a lot of water like like a gallon probably are you have you become the guy who walks around with a gallon of water dude you know i'm always been the guy that brings water everywhere yeah i know but like i just picture a guy at gold's gym holding like a uh, no i bring my my hydro flask of water and i bring it i bring it everywhere i go i bring it to people's apartments and i didn't realize how weird that was (laughs) until recently somebody commented on it they're like francis is the guy who brings his own water everywhere to like someone else's home were you doing it pre-18 Oh, mm. yes, I was, and I was, and, and, and there's two reasons. One, I don't know what someone else's water situation is like at their home. I can't count on someone else to have as much water as I, as I need. But why don't you, so, but in New York, it, you do you not drink out of the faucet? I don't mind the tap. So then you, they should be fine. No? But I prefer 
my filtered water from my from our Brita filter. By the way, I just say Brita filter. We don't even have a Brita. We have some other one. Mm-hmm. But the point is, I don't, I don't want to... Look, let's say you go to someone's house, right? And they hand you... You say, can I have some water? And then they say, sure. And they, they hand you a glass. But it's like a, a small glass, a water glass. Mm. That only holds like eight ounces, 10 yeah, ounces yeah. of water. I'm going to need to get up and fill that thing so many times that it's going to make people uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. And I can't, I don't want to do that. I don't want to cause a scene. So I'd rather just bring my 24 ounce hydro flask of water filled with ice cold home filtered water and not worry about the variables of not having water. That yeah. I like. Yeah. But dude, you also are making a scene by bringing that thing with you. Yeah. But if people have a problem with me drinking, drinking water out of my own bottle, you know, Fuck those people. <laughs> those people need to chill out, man. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. But but like you could also like I'm just saying, if you wanted to ditch the fl- hydro flask and then ask for if be like, listen, can do you mind if I fill this up a bunch? Like I'm that maybe is less of a statement than bringing the hydro flask. Yeah, but if we're hanging out, let's let's say that I came to your apartment, right? And I said, Hey G, can I get some water? You said sure. In fact, you'd probably feel compelled to get me a glass of water, right? right? But then I'm going to finish that glass quick. And then I'm going to get up and fill it again. Then you're going to feel guilty about the fact that potentially you're not refilling my glass of water. I don't think so. And especially not now, now that I know this. I mean, dude, you can do whatever you want in my apartment. By yeah, the but way. I can't have this conversation with everyone. I don't have a podcast. True, true, no, true, true. So we, yeah, you're you're lucky that we have open communication, but like, with others, you know, if you got called on the hydro flask, I mean, like, it's a different story before someone says something. Once someone says something, you know, you don't want to be the, like, guy who's weighing his chicken at dinner on the little scale. You know what I mean? No. It's like, it's a step down from becoming, from being that guy, I'm just saying. I think it's a few <laughs> steps below that. What are the steps in between? Well, you know, <laughs> there's... um I think in terms of okay, so the the question is, what are you bringing into someone else's house to to uh, make sure that your comfort is accounted for? Right. Because you don't want you know. So, if if bringing your own hydro flask is is where we're starting, and then the worst thing is, you said bringing your, your own scale to weigh food on. Yeah, or 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 even just like bringing your own food. Oh yeah, would be damn. bad. But Especially, yeah. You could lie and say it's for like an experiment for the podcast, and then they'll be then you'll be absolved. Because like, dude, like you hear stories about like Alexander yeah, Skarsgård, the could, one I think of, but he would have to bring his own food to dinner parties and shit. Who? Alexander Skarsgård when he was doing Tarzan, or he was Tarzan, right? Yeah. He like went over to one of my friend's house for dinner, bulking, right? And she said that he brought his own food and he had to leave early because he had to go to bed early to like get huge. I mean, there's just tens of millions of dollars on the line exactly so you could say i've found that like it's for work is like the great caveat in new york society yeah but it to your point i mean i could probably bring anything to someone's place if i could just lie about why i'm doing it but it's not even really a lie sorry i can't eat your thai food that you ordered i'm i've converted to eating only halal food or something <laughs> what really wow no, but i didn't dude, know that about you're you are doing the experiment for for the pod and for you're documenting your body transformation oh so it's not untrue it's not it's not it's actually like partially true even though even if it's just because you want to be fucking huge for your wedding well, right so oh. <laughs> <laughs> but dude that's the beauty of the pod it's amazing that how, becomes about work that's it, work it's amazing how how much this when people find out that i'm taking creatine and that i'm trying to gain muscle mass they have really strong reactions to it what do they say a lot of people are like, "Why? Like, well, you're, you're. That's a joke. Why would you do that?" So I think that what some people might get upset by, I am not like this, but I've experienced other people be like this, and it always is shocking to me. They're upset that you're already in better shape than them, and now you're deciding that you're going to get in even better shape than them. Yeah, and that annoys them. I'm, I'm stretching out the distance between us. Like, dude, I, w- I had a friend where, I would like, when I was in, in my fittest time, at my fittest time, right. I would have worked out and my friend who I was staying with, I would call him and I'd be like, what are you up to? He's like, I'm going hiking. 
And I'd be like, oh, dude, can I come? And he'd be, he would be joking, but he was serious. He's like, it's annoying now that you're doing this as your like extra part of your workout. Like you've already worked out. And now my entire workout is just like a little piece of your workout. Yeah. And that is discouraging. Interesting. <laughs> interesting. That is an interesting, I get that. People like they make it about them. Somehow, yeah, right. Which is, which is stupid. Let, dude, if you want to go get huge. I'm all for it. I think it's great. I said something to, I, I told, I told Soder, Dan Soder this, and he had a very funny response. Oh, and he, he said something. I was like, yeah, I started taking creatine. And he goes, oh, what's up? 1990s hockey. <laughs> or something. Like, he's like, what's up? High school hockey. That's player. a good burn. That's a good yeah, burn. Yeah. Like funny. it was very funny. He just instantly went into kind of character about it. That's like, good. And and the other part of it is so many people still think that creatine is going to cause your kidneys to explode. They're yeah. like, isn't that a steroid? Isn't that going isn't that bad for you? Right, right. And I'm like, I don't think so. I, I think we all were misled back in the 1990s when we knew that one hockey player who started taking it got ridiculously huge and then like started stealing cars. Really? That happened? Uh, you know, something we, I knew Could've someone like that. Rage. Unruly, yeah. All right, so we're doing the Python. We're gonna do a little measuring. Python check in. Yeah. All right, hold on. Oh yeah. Now keep in mind, it's only been one week, so I really, I, ugh, I'd really be surprised if Pythons have grown. If there's much, much Python growth here. Do we remember what? Actually, somebody screenshotted that they were monitoring Francis's growth. Okay, Julio, do Still. the honors, pal. This time I'll do it right so I don't... People were just absolutely fucking shook that Francis had 30 inches. I do. I want to make sure go. I do it the same exact way. It was like that, right? right here. I well, believe, did I do it like this? Yeah, limp. Yeah, limp. But it was it... Okay. Make sure you get it the right way. Hear ye, hear ye. I have like closer to 13 right now, bro. What? Do yeah. it again. Well, come on, been, one more time. Have you just been, you do look bigger, bro. I have been lifting a lot, you and look, I've been eating a ton. A lot huge. of cod. I eat a lot of cod. No, no, of course I'm not flexing. Bro, over 13. Wait, what? Oh, no, sorry. Sorry. My bad. Yeah, dude, what? You're literally... Is that possible? I'm pulling hard, and you're at 13, bro. Okay. What was I last week? 12 and a half? Like, less, right, Ryan? Where was he last week? Oh fuck! <laughs> was, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Well, somebody, I have it. No, no, I have it. Somebody emailed us. Thank you, whoever is was monitoring. We have this email. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Francis, twelve inch bicep, forty three inch chest. You want to do the chest again? Or yeah, no? let's do the chest. Okay, let's do the chesticles. Can we do my bicep again? The control group. Yeah, but. <laughs> what, what are you? Oh, you want to do it right now? Let's do Julio's. Julio's at like 12 and a half. 12, 12 and a half. Well, I'm not going to cut that. That's now we're going past the level of tension we had before. Okay. Yeah. Like 12. Yeah. 12. Julio's gotten bigger, bigger pythons. Does that mean our python measurer is getting smaller? The pyth This is also a different python measurer. This is? Yeah. We used a black one last time. That came oh. out of a spool. Yeah, I, mean, I don't remember where that but is. But does I mean, dude, regardless, like you know. Okay, we're using all kinds of different tools. This is the least scientific Python measuring this contest a, yeah. we've ever done. Well, then from this day forward, we're going to use this pink okay. Python measurer. Uh, and I think I was pulling harder, and then Francis was pulling on me. So I think I'm a little under twelve, mm. and Francis is thirteen, around the thirteen, if not more. <clears throat> all right, the big boys being unleashed. Well, let's just leave it at that then for this week. But Dude. I'm going to believe that I've grown my pythons half an inch, <laughs> which seems impossible. Dude, can somebody please like innovate doctor portals, doctor patient portals? Is there a worse fucking app than your doctor's portal? It's like every there's single one of them. a message for you in the portal. Yeah, there's no. Yeah. Like what the portal? Like I have to literally go into a portal and into another universe to figure this out. Is how confusing it is, dude. You're and like the one that I use, it's like a circle, and there's all these different things you can press on it. It is so dumb. Medications and like anytime I get a notice from my doctor, I'm always stressed out that like there's some bill I don't know about, and it's typically something mundane and stupid, and like it's just not worth the stress. It's mm. like there's no need for me to get these notifications. Mm-hmm. 
I don't know. Mm -hmm. No, I agree with that. They're all different. It's as if every single doctor's office had to hire its own coder. Dude, it's To build insane. out their portal. It's so fucking stupid. Stupid. I went and saw the foot doctor. Can How I tell that? you about that? No, what happened? Oh, for years when you... Yeah. What happened? It's major toe problems. And Wait, do we know about the toe? I know that you stubbed your finger. Is it, do you, can you even stub? You jammed your finger. I hurt my fingers, but those are, those are getting better. So what's happened with your foot? My foot, I went and saw the foot doctor, the podiatrist. <laughs> and I had had some major... Um, my, my toes hurt a lot because they were rubbing together too much because I have hammer toes. What's what's a, does that mean? They go that down. I don't really know what the, what it means. What hammer toe? What, what are hammer toes, Ryan? A hammer toe has an abnormal bend in the middle joint of a toe. Interesting. Uh, hammer toes and mall mallet toes usually occur in your second, third, and fourth toes. A hammer toe, I think it's also referred to as a mallet toe, are foot deformities that occur due to an imbalance in the muscles, tendons, and ligaments that normally hold the toe in its proper form. Hmm. Hmm. Well, that, so the lady told me that I, I have a very flat foot um, and that therefore a lot of my weight, I think, is going onto my toes, which is causing them to rub together, which makes them swell. And the bones don't have enough room. Oh, geez. Um, it, it's not even that the shoe I'm wearing is too small. It's that the, the toes are just rubbing together and it becomes super painful. Yes. Um, but in the process of x-raying my foot to figure out what was going on with my toes, <laughs> she found three separate fractures what? in my two feet. What? That have m m happened years and years and years ago. Do you even feel them? Do you know no, they're there? No, but they could cause arthritis down the road. Shit. But I had one on this foot out here. I had one in the right there. And then I had one on the outside of my right foot. And I have to believe it's probably soccer that did all that. Damn. Do you have, do you like even understand arthritis? I don't at all. I think it's joint pain typically. I, like, yeah, that's like wearing the down of cartilage. Of okay. You then get bone on bone. Does it fuck you up? Friction. It's painful. Because there's so many, I've been hearing about it for my entire life on commercials and shit, but I just have no idea like what the reality of a life with arthritis is. It sucks, man. Being in yeah. pain all the time. Is it really painful? Yeah. And it, and like how people do people who it? played sports did have a bad. Well, there's a couple ways. One is to have the joint replaced. Mm. So if you have knee pain, it's usually the joints that you have the most arthritis. And got it. You get a knee replacement. You get a hip replacement. Shoulder replacement. Whatever it is. Hey. Jesus. But then the other way is, uh, I think another common way is you could try to take a supplement called, I can't even remember. Yeah, I don't know. Glucosamine. Wow. Glucosamine. Sounds familiar. It's supposed to be called the joint lubricant. What's rheumatoid arthritis? I don't know. <laughs> Ryan? I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> Arthritis is a form of arthritis that causes pain, swelling, stiffness, and loss of function in your joints. AKA arthritis? Yeah. Uh, I'm looking <laughs> for the specifics. Rheumatoid. More women than men get this type of arthritis. Okay. It often starts in middle age and is most common in older people. Got it. Okay. Rheumatoidal? Yeah. Um, All right. Come on. Let's pick it up here. Let's go. All right, dude. So I thought I was eating. Do you ever just like... Have you ever been eating something and been like come up with like a stupid invention? Obviously, I don't even know how to execute this invention, but I really think that it would improve the experience of eating said food. Burrito, a burrito juice extractor that extracts the juice out of the bottom of the burrito so that your pan doesn't just get soaked in bean mm, juice. Mm -hmm. Do you not want the juice though? No, I want the juice within, but I don't want it to fall underneath so the juice would, would in theory be evenly distributed throughout unfortunately the bottom would just be a little juice heavy mm -hmm. you could you could pierce the bottom of the burrito and uh, arthroscopically and suck the juice out of the bottom <laughs> so you can sit there and enjoy the fucking burrito dude so it sounds like you're basically just inventing a needle Right, but you would suck burrito juice out specifically. Oh, you wanted to suck it out. So I want to suck the burrito juice why out. Why don't you use a basketball pump 
or a, because that would do the opposite. That would shoot the burrito juice down my throat. Yeah, and but when you pull, and when you pull it like this, it's it, like a turkey baster. You stick the needle in, right? Yeah, but it doesn't suck out. It's it only pushes it down. It only pushes in. And doing the like thing wouldn't work. So it's only think, pressure. Think think about this, right? Maybe it's not the air, right? Well, you got a needle connected to a hose with a with a, a plunger, and you stick the needle in the burrito. And then you pull the plunger out, and that syringe fills with the juice. Yeah, but that doesn't happen with a pump. When you so pull then, out, then, nothing then not happens. a pump. A okay, syringe. fine. But yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, that could work. Should we try it? But you're right, though. That's literally how they do it. With like the problem is, I don't know if all the juice in the burrito pools in the same spot. So mm. the, the 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 how finite that point of that needle is. Is only going to collect whatever juice is right there. That's true, and also the juice tends to get propelled to the bottom as you eat it. Uh -huh. So therefore, like you have to be needling your burrito like <laughs> seven times. <laughs> it's so fucking stupid. It's so, insane. You know what I was thinking about? Sometimes when I'm <laughs> when I'm eating and I'm st if I'm standing up and I'm eating, I get so happy that I start dancing. Are you really? Oh yeah. You ever do that? No. You ever like you ever enjoy what you're eating so much, and if you're standing and you're eating it, you start moving around. <laughs> I go like, I'll be like, I make no, noise like that. That's fun though. I'm I, so I will happy make audible, to be eating. Yeah. I will make audible noises. Yeah. My dad's friend Dave Selliver, he used to come over, and my mom would cook, and while we would eat, he would audibly make noise. He would go, mm. Mm. <laughs> Mm, he would just constantly do that and you put him together with link and you're gonna have a nice uh, mm. yeah literally and we always were kind of like we really found it like amusing we all we all really like dave a lot he's a great guy that's nice um and we were trying to come up with theories as to why he would do that mm -hmm. and my dad had some theory that i don't think holds up he would say so dave's wife is named takako and she's japanese and dave was like very familiar with japanese culture and my dad was like you know in japan it's very customary to like audibly make noise when you're enjoying a meal i'm like dad i don't know if that checks out here dude yeah it could be that's not so crazy from big g dave just really was taking on good japanese dude poor dave so dave was watching <laughs> dave watched our cat our first cat frisky when we were in italy for like a long time we were there for like three and a half months or something and the cat died while dave was watching the cat and that must have been so shit. Did he for him. let you guys know while you were over there? Yeah. Yeah. And like, dude, I was devastated. I cried for like three straight days. I was like eight years old or wow. something. Wow. And, and we were like, Dave killed Frisky. Yeah. <laughs> but then there was this like, I, I still don't know what really happened that day because apparently the vet said that it appeared that the cat had suffered a skateboard wound. Like, what skateboard? Like, the odd, dude. The odds of a is that an elbow burn. Dave did live from with a, a half pipe, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's ridiculous. Like Dave did live with a cul-de-sac at the end of the road, which mm. perhaps would mean it would be more likely that people would be skateboarding on the street. But still, dude, it's rural Connecticut. Mm -hmm. It's not densely populated. There's no sidewalks. Like nobody's skate ripping through the streets on a skateboard. Like I wonder what really happened. Like maybe something so terrible happened to Frisky that they weren't able to tell us. I like the idea that Dave watched a YouTube video of a pet skateboarding. And he thought, <laughs> I think we can do this. And then he took Frisky out and put her on a skateboard. Oh, my God. And uh, unfortunately, she didn't know how to do it. And she wiped out, took a digger. Like, is, it, is it possible that some animal like decapitated Frisky, like ate Frisky's head, and that Dave just found Frisky's headless body, and he was unable to... Is that what the skateboard wound was? It just sounds like such a lie. Like, who, mm. what, what do you mean skateboard wound? Like, or maybe, like, <laughs> like, maybe a cat getting hit by a car is too pain. They thought it, they were trying to, like, shield us from pain, and they didn't tell us the truth or something. <laughs> right? It could be. That's a lot of conspiracy against poor Dave. I know, I know, I know. Yeah. Dude, I have a question for you. I was, a, I was, uh, I had a, went to a gathering with friends over the weekend. It was actually uh, two of Hillary's friends, who have now become my friends from high school's uh, joint birthday party, Claire and Emily. We went to the Peking Duck House. Mm. Have you ever been there? No. It's a really odd place. It's like a BYOB place, and it tends to be for people who are like celebrating birthdays, and, and everybody was like hammered. And 
every time someone would get happy birthday sung to them, the entire room would sing happy birthday. Oh, wow. That's how fucked up everyone was. Like, they thought it was fun to, like, get involved. Yeah, but, sure. But anyway, they bring out this fucking duck, they chop its head off, and then they, like, carve it right in front of you. Was it alive when they brought no, it no, out? No, no, no. It was, oh. like, cooked and ready to rock. Um, but it was very good. Anyway, afterward, we go and we're hanging out, and this song comes on. Uh, it was a Maya song that... Uh, it's after midnight and she's on her phone. Phone. Remember that song? Yeah. Saying, come over because she's all alone. Oh, yeah, I remember, remember that. This? Mm -hmm. What is it that you want? Do, 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 yeah. do. What is it that, that you need? Okay, so that song came on, and I remember the music video and how it like kind of took place in the desert. And then the song came on, Waiting for Tonight. Oh. Whoa. And I realized, I was like, wow, during that era, there was sort of like a lot of desert themed music. Yes. Yes. And that was Enrique in the desert. I think Hero was in the desert really? too for music, the music I video. Can be. But also even like songs that are even more specific, like I Dream of Rain. Remember yeah, that song? Yeah, hey. yeah. So I said this to one of their friends and she just looked at me and went, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> and am I, so I'm, I'm happy that this resonates with you a little bit. Yes. Well, I think it's because you and I talk about these things. Most people don't. Maybe, yeah. Most people don't think uh, to talk about things this fringe. <laughs> Imagine, I'm just, I'm all of a sudden, I talk to you so much that I just start applying the way I talk to you to other people. Yeah. I'm just like, I got something for you. And yeah. they're like, did I ask for something? <laughs> <laughs> Should we do an email? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean you send me an email right now <laughs> dude another song from the era too very desert vibes and i remember the music video also being the desert you're frozen when your heart's not open to madonna mm -hmm. i don't if know that I one could melt oh yeah 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 i know that one which i yeah. think has been repurposed for tiktok now i think that's like a tiktok song. interesting Interesting. That's how you know you're getting old when the songs you grew up with are now being sampled and the people don't know that those are samples. Right. Right. The same way all the hip hop we listened to in the nineties was sampled and we had no idea. Yeah. Kanye sampled so much hip hop. P. Diddy. There are so many songs. Lots of shit, dude. I was watching the Australian Open. Yeah. Uh Nadal. Unbelievable. Won. I mean, I didn't even follow it and then I watched the highlights. I didn't realize that he came back from two sets down and was not looking good in the third set. Yeah, man. I mean, the the younger the younger chaps really let him off the hook throughout the tournament. I was talking with our pal Abba about this a little bit. Um, it's just kind of a bummer to watch like Nadal win. Like, I, it's amazing if you're a Nadal fan when you're like to now be able to, to have to say like Nadal is the greatest tennis player at the moment with the most Grand Slams. It's just a little hard for like the Federer fans. I'm not a I'm not like a Nadal hater per se. I thought you liked Nadal more than Federer. I don't. I'm a, I'm sort of like I don't know, whatever. I respect Nadal, but like I'm just for some reason typically don't end up rooting for him. Okay. Um even though, you know, I he's an incredible competitor. But like Shapovalov should have beat him, he choked. Like it just gets hard. Like people it, it's a mind fuck. You're like, "Oh, am I about to beat Nadal?" and then you just like can't maintain your level and you choke and you lose. Mm. And like apparently, you know, that happened to Medvedev too. Uh and, you know, whatever. But I don't think I'm, it amazes me the way that these commentators are unbiased when they commentate. I get too invested in the outcome and it starts to like really stress me out. And like, I wouldn't be able to sit there and not like root for someone. Mm. I think that that comes through a little bit. I do. I've never seen can... it come through in the, in the tennis commentators. Like they're never, they never appear to be rooting for someone. Mm. Interesting. Well, I think what you do is whoever wins, you say, you know, Medvedev wins the Australian Open. But up to that point, you can hear a little bit more excitement when Nadal wins a big point. You're rooting for a good match. Right, right, right. right. But they're, they're, they're just commentating. They're like talking about what's happening. Yeah. They're not like, oh, I wish that he was able to close that out. I wish. Yeah. And maybe you're like instructed to not do that. You must be. I think you probably you are. Probably are. Yeah, you have to be. Yeah. Um cuz dude, yeah, you can't help but think. And then it just makes you that more bummed that much more bummed out that like Federer had two fucking championship points in the fifth set against Djokovic at Wimbledon and didn't win the match and now Nadal has 20 grand slams and Federer has 20. It's just like hard to stomach. Yeah, but he also staved off insane I know, I know. efforts from Andy Roddick at Wimbledon and 
Yeah, other true. other players where he had to fight back from the dead to win, you know? Totally. And my dad, and anytime I say some shit like that, my dad's like, Julio, Federer has a billion dollars. Don't feel that bad for him. Yeah. He's fine. I'm like, okay, yeah. that's, that's a good point. There was an amazing article about Roger Federer in the New York Times. <laughs> what was <are we> it? <laughs> it was about his ability to um, really rise to the occasion for marketing opportunities. Yeah, he's an incredible. He's incredible. He's the single most marketable athlete of all time. They more say. than Tiger. More than Tiger. More than Michael Jordan. Really? Uh huh. Unbelievable. Yeah. They say that. They say that his ability to get on a you know a plane and go to like two or three different countries in a day go to a charity f- function at something uh and then go to a a nike thing and then a watch thing and e- each place he goes to he works the room he he says hi to everyone it smiles he's talking he's joking he's having many conversations with every single person there giving them all what they want and and even if he's doing a favor for someone else who has asked him to come to their charity he rises to it and gives his a effort and energy the whole time dude i've heard that too from players like tennis players who are like who, anybody who's like in the locker room whether it's a coach's players they're like everybody loves him he's just <laughs> he's just relentless he's I the mean, man he's dude. so he's like kevin hart dude he's like the kevin hart of tennis he's the fucking man dude yeah. and in nadal's book even nadal be like Every, he's like every player I've ever seen is like playing in some kind of pain except Federer. Like he's like something about he's just his game. He's so graceful. It's so yeah. beautiful. It's like, and he's like, dude, I've watched him practice. He doesn't even practice that hard. Like I watch what I have to do to be at the level that he's at. And it like is frustrating yeah. to see how it's like, he's calm. He's not stressed. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. He's, he's a, a, a human that was truly touched by God. Do you know he's what I mean? He's the fucking man. He though. was a chosen person. Two sets of twins, too. Yeah. No, with no foul play. That's some chosen one shit, dude. Wow. No in vitro or whatever it's called. Wow. Did I say that right? Yeah. Um, dude, mm. fucking crazy. So anyway, I was I like I was watching the match and I woke up to watch it. I woke up at five a.m. So it was in the middle of the second set. I watched the entire rest of the match and to just like what? And again, it's really unhealthy to root against people. So I try to sit there and be like, dude, don't root against Nadal. Just watch the match and enjoy it. But then I can't help but watch myself being frustrated that Medvedev's about to blow it. I know what's coming. I'm like, if you don't step on Nadal, he will come back. Mm. He will find it somehow to win. Yeah. Right. Whatever. It was incredible. incredible. I'm happy, you know, because it means that Djokovic is now going to have to win a couple to, to, to usurp. Yeah. And it's not looking like he can play France because he's not getting fucking vaccinated. So we'll see if he ends up figuring a workaround for that. Wow. Um, dude, so Hillary and I got into a fight about this briefly the other night, and we very quickly made up, but it was, it was funny, and I was wondering what you think about this. Okay. I want no spoilers when I'm watching a show, and, that, and I can be pretty extreme about it. I don't like watching the pre... Like, you know when a show will be like, last time on Euphoria? You don't like that? I don't watch that, because I know then what's going to happen in the episode, because of what they showed. Like, if they show some obscure character in the quick minute thing i know that that character is going to be in this episode that has now just ruined the episode for yeah, but i wouldn't necessarily remember who that character was but you might what if it's somebody important what if it's like oh that creepy drug dealer from episode two is in this episode oh that means he's involved i like a little refresher if especially if i haven't watched the show in a couple days i need to remember where we left off fair and i'm sure that's the like intention for it yeah but i don't like seeing that i don't like seeing how long the episode is because then I know what's going to happen. Right. If it's 55 minute of 57 minute, I know what's about to happen at this final part because I know they're going to leave me on a cliffhanger. And like that ruins the show for me. So you just need to be completely blind going into a TV watching experience yes. in order to enjoy it? Yes. And no, I just don't want things ruined. Like I can still enjoy it, but like I want to have the optimal experience. Like dude, to the point where Hillary was like, we were watching Archive 81 and she's like, can we see how many episodes are left? And I said, no, because then I will, I will ruin you know, the show. Sierra's for me. the same way. She can't, she doesn't want to know how many episodes there are. So, yeah. So she goes, okay, what if you close your eyes? I'll look and I won't tell you. I said, that's fine. So we do that. We do it, whatever. We watch the episode. And then, like, we, for some reason, it ends up going back to the, to the Netflix menu. I know where this is going. <laughs> and it ends up on the fucking list of episodes. And I now know how many episodes there are. And I was like, what the fuck? And she goes, 
she's like, that was not a fair reaction. I'm like, well, I wasn't, I wasn't mad at you. I'm just frustrated that this show that I was really enjoying has now been completely ruined for me. She's like, it's Dude, been completely ruined. I'm like, it hasn't been completely is, ruined. You are, you are an absolute goose. <laughs> You are being a goose right now. That is a very goosey type. <laughs> I'm a goose. To just knowing how many episodes there are somehow ruins the season for you. That's goosey. It does, dude. Because now I know. I'm like, I know that this episode, this this show is over in a half an hour, which limits the possibilities of what can possible of what can happen. I don't want to know. I want it to. Be, I want to be like, that's it. Yeah, but 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 don't you get more excited when you know you've got one episode left? We've got our final season finale tonight of the show. Boy, oh boy, I can't wait all day long. You're pulling out your goose feathers. <laughs> it's exciting when you're watching a show that comes out every week because you know it's the season finale. But when it's like a Netflix binge situation, they all dropped at once. It, I, to me, it ruins it just for me personally. Interesting. But I, I respect your mindset behind it. I've developed this awful habit of being in the middle of a show, say Ozark, for example, and pausing it during the middle of a scene or at the end of a scene just to set myself up for knowing how much I have left to watch. And that really takes me out of it and like yeah. I'm predicting a twist. So yeah. It's a bad habit. Yeah. <sighs> bad habit, dude. I'm you like guys, ruining it for myself. Just live in the moment. Just, <laughs> you know, a couple of, couple of geese here, Chris. <laughs> I am living in the moment. That's the point. But dude, speaking of living in the moment, I've thought of this, and this is something I'm trying to get better about. When I'm eating something I really enjoy, because you said you dance, which we have not, we glossed over that a bit too much. Uh. That's insane that you sit there and dance. Oh, Francis must like that burrito. He's uh -huh. shaking his hips. Uh -huh. Ooh. You know what I do when I'm enjoying food? I start dreading it being over. Uh. <laughs> like a quarter into a burrito that I'm really enjoying, I'm like, fuck, this is going to be over. I'm like, I want another one. <laughs> You can't eat two. Dude, you can't eat two. You just need to really just try to enjoy this. Just eat slow. Twenty. Try to do 20 chews before you swallow. They say oh that's healthier anyway God. for digestion. I don't end up doing any of this, but this is my thought process. And then it like it completely ruins it for me. I, I'm a little bit that way with, say, cookies. If I know, you know, I'm only allowed to have two cookies, then I, I get upset that there's not that much left. That the cookies are ending? Yeah, with sweets. But other things, uh, most, for me, for the most part, food is a chore. That's so crazy. You say that. I wish so badly that I could have it's just, that happen It's to me. just stuff I have to get into my body to keep going. For yeah, me, it's I, an escape. <laughs> 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 I'm serious, bro. Uh, for me, it's an escape. Yeah. Um, okay, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Is it rude to be a guest at somebody's house and start like being all religious at dinner? Like, do whatever your religious shit you do at your house is at this other person's house. Like, if you go to my house, if you come over to my house and you want to say grace at my dinner table, is that rude? Yeah, um, Even if it's just amongst you and your people who also do that. Say it's your wife and your kid and you guys are going to hold hands and thank God for the food that he's given you so generously. But I don't do that. Is no, that I, I, I don't think it's rude. I don't think rude would be the word I would use. What was the word you would use? Well, I think it's rude. I think well, you, you think you, you, you live in a non-denominational apartment. No, but like a don't secular home. Don't come over and like burden me with your fucking rituals, dude. Like do that shit at your own house. I'll come to your house. And if you want to do it, go ahead. It's fine. But like we're in my house. Like don't fucking pray at my dinner table, dude. Is that fucked up? Am I being harsh? Yeah, okay. you are. Okay. Think about this, right? Let's say that you had a guest from Africa from okay. your travels, right? Okay. And they came and they were they they were a Muslim and they started praying whether it was whether it was at mealtime or one of their five times of praying. That's different the cuz they're doing that in private. I'm not involved in the praying. They can go Dude, pray, do whatever you got to do. They might have they might be praying. But okay, uh, may, in your living room. That's fine. I'm not like involved though. Like if we're sitting at dinner, like why am I now? But why are you involved if they just held hands with their wife for a second, put their head down and said, no, 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 no. I, it just feels like it's crossing a line to me. I know. I think I'm being, I agree that I'm being, oh, I'm maybe being a little harsh. Oh, you know, it's funny, man. I don't know. I, I, I really have no problem with it. In fact, I find, I find prayer fascinating. Have you ever been to a, a Passover Seder? Yeah, it's great. It's cool. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I find 
witnessing different religions uh rituals to be very enriching i find it very cool me too all the way all the way may dude all the way i 100 just not at your own dinner table. like dude like <laughs> you start then you start using language like we no we don't do that you do that who are these people we, that came over did you no invite like you know book of mormon <laughs> Bible thumpers in it's your not, like the, the, the specific example is not necessarily important. Let's just assume that some version of this has happened at some point in my life. Mm. Um, but like if I go to your house and you invite me over and you're, you know, Orthodox, whatever, and you pray at your dinner, absolutely. I love to see the way you do it. I'm 100% involved. I'm a guest. Let's rock. Let's pray, dude. Mm -hmm. I'm happy. I went to like one of the biggest fucking mo most significant mosques in the entire in entire Islam. It was the most incredible fucking experience. I love all that shit. I love churches. I, I love it all. I agree with you. However, don't like come and fucking pray. At my dinner table. <laughs> and that's not even to say that I am like an atheist. What, if, not. They, what if they asked you? What if they said, well, do you mind if I say a quick prayer? No, fine. Completely fine. Oh. Oh. Wait, what? Was that not obvious? You just burst out into your fucking, we thank God for this. Get out of here. No, it's. It's. I didn't realize that you were only taking umbrage with people who don't ask permission. If you were coming, if Francis came over and you're like, "Gee, like, listen, dude, would you mind if I prayed a little? I'm embarrassed about it. I, I you don't know that. I'm surprised. <laughs> I'm surprised someone had the gall to come over and just start praying, saying grace, saying grace without asking you or talking to you first at your home. Yeah, I'm surprised. That is quite. Um, that's quite uh, an overt display of of religion. It's just a, it's oppressive and annoying in someone else's home. I I will say you know I'm be religious. I have nothing. I I am not not religious. I don't even know what the fuck I am. But I'm not completely against. Did the they idea just did they just grab the hands of the people on the left and the right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, oh, we're doing this. I no. I actually think they started like clasping their hands and like staring. What in, in that direction the over there, heavens. whatever. Yeah, right. What in the heck? It's just like uh, it's it's oppressive. It's almost I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's 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 a little foisty. Invite me over if you want to do it. We'll do it, but don't come over and fucking start doing your shit. Like I that. didn't. I didn't realize. I'm fat. I'm very curious to hear who this was. <laughs> you don't know. You don't know any of the people who. Okay. I'm, who I'm allu alluding to, but yeah. yeah, just like come softly with your shit. Mm. You know what I mean? Don't burden us with your fucking hydro flask. I'm joking. <laughs> 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 Completely joking. The hydro flask is the uh, is the Eucharist the, of of water bottles. It's the honestly, it's almost the equivalent of you coming over and making me drink out of the hydro flask too. That's <laughs> that's almost what it's like. Or or you just start pouring everybody's water with the hydro From flask without hydro asking. Flask, yeah. Do you want some of this? this is my water's better. Okay, yeah, sure. Let's try your water. Oh, your water is better, dude. Fuck. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Some good fuck. That's some good fucking water, dude. <laughs> um. Okay. Should we do a couple email skis? Ooh, emails, please. We have some really good ones. And uh, dude, real quickly, I want to ask you this: What is that thing that like all of our parents have on there? That like immunization? That's like a circle? Is it that has like a bunch of little dots in it? What vaccine was that? I don't know. Do you know, like every, I don't know if your parents have it. My parents both have it on their like upper tricep situation. And like a lot of people of that boomer generation have that like circle. Ask your parents if they have it. I'm curious. I don't know. I, I don't know, know if it's about just that. some like European shit or something, but they have it. Mm. Um, okay. So we have a lot of good stuff, guys. And we're trying hey, Ryan's to. Got the, Ryan's got this for you. Okay. That's ah, smallpox. Mm. The SPV. Early 1980s. Wow. Um, crazy. Okay. We got some good emails. We're trying to be better about getting through the emails quicker. Um, so that we don't give you guys advice a year too late. <laughs> uh, this sounds pretty funny. Inside joke with coworkers while blacked out. Oh, okay. Uh, Hey guys, half story time, half asking for advice. I have a group of friends that I met through work. We don't exactly work together on a day to day basis, but we stay in touch and go out together occasionally. The first time we went out, I got us absolutely wasted. Someone was mixing drinks like Julio hosting a dinner party at our friend's apartment. <laughs> Classic. Good. Classic Very Julio. Good. Uh, and I blacked out 
after just a short while at the bar. I've kept it under control whenever we've hung out since, and in general. At some point in the night, I acquired a painting. The, <laughs> the, now, the painting is now hanging in my coworker's apartment, and everyone except for me seems to know the story. Did I steal it? Was it in the garbage? I have literally no idea. Every time I go to a party at this person's place, someone mentions the painting. I learn little bits and pieces every time. <laughs> I feel like it's embarrassing to say I was blacked out, don't remember, and ask for the story. However, I imagine they already know that I was. What do you guys think? Wow. <laughs> so does he still have the painting? The, it appears that the coworker has the painting still that he somehow acquired. Uh, what do you think? I want to hear your thoughts. <laughs> Imagine he like fucking robbed Sotheby's. It's like some incredible yeah, story. I mean, this is this is art theft. You've yeah. got to you've got to give that back. Um, I think that that big of a group of people would not have allowed him to do something terrible. Oh, that's a nice thought. Maybe this is the way to get to the bottom of it. I don't think you should ask them. I do think it's too embarrassing. You don't want to relive the shame of the one time you got blacked out, especially now that you've like been a completely upstanding citizen. That's like the kid who goes to the hospital one time in high school for drinking too much, and now their family calls them an alcoholic for the rest of their life. Yeah, and I know someone like that. As do I, and yeah. it sucks. I feel bad for them. This is what you do. Next time you go to a party at this person's house, bring a random friend with you. Make them swear to secrecy, not to tell what's happening, and have them ask, wait, what happened? Either when you're not in the room, or when you're in a place in the room where you don't have to say the details. Yeah. As, as the person's waiting for them to tell the story, just laugh and shake your head and cover and cover your eyes uh. and just keep doing that. And you're laughing so much you weren't able to yet get to the place where you could tell the story yourself. What if people start asking you questions? Just be like, <laughs> dude. <laughs> and never answer. You're that is a lot of evading. Use are some evasive maneuvers that I don't know. You're not going to get to that step. I don't think it'll ever come to that. But if it does, just like try to find a distraction. What if the the people who had the painting stolen have been waiting for someone to broach this topic while you were there all this time, and now it's finally out in the open, and they feel free to tee off on you and and read you the riot act. There is a risk. There is a risk associated with that. How badly do you want to know what happened? I think you want to know what happened that night. You need yeah. to know, dude. This and, is a pivotal yeah. moment in your life. This is another good one that we like. This one's called "Preparing for a Breakup." Okay. Hi there. Found the pod through Francis's first episode on GGE. Diehard listener ever since. Thank you. Oh. I'm emailing because I'm thinking of breaking up with my boyfriend, mm. but I'm having trouble with the splitting of our lives. I'm 22. I know Francis will say I'm too young to be worrying. Yeah. Before my boyfriend, um, I lived alone for three years with no friends or solid hobbies. I did everything by myself. I tried to make friends, but it never really worked out or fizzled after a couple of gatherings where I teach all of my colleagues are 15 years plus older than me, so it isn't a great option for making friends either. This said, I was pretty lonely and sad before I met him. This is what I'm afraid of I will go back into. Recently, I've picked up a hobby that my boyfriend introduced me to. It includes racing outdoors, and we do it probably 45 out of 52 weekends of the year. I'm absolutely terrified of someone he know that someone he knows will be listening to the pod and know who I'm talking about, so I'm not going to say the sport. He's well known in all versions of the community. I just started within the last year, but I really love it. It has a very small population of women in it. All of our weekends are full of races with all of the same hundreds of people every weekend for the last three years. This is good, right? Yeah, I'm so curious to hear what you think the sport yeah. is. Uh, 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 the same rotation of people, uh, the same rotation of people depending on the event that we go to. He's, a, he's good friends with every shop owner and employee I would need to go to. I want to continue this sport, but I'm afraid that I will not be able to. It requires a truck to move our equipment, and I have a uh, and I have a paid off car. It requires knowledge in motors and a lot of things. I just don't have the knowledge Wait, or money she's for. She's really dropping a lot of breadcrumbs about the sport. Know, it almost feels like she wants us to break up with this guy for her. <laughs> My friends were his friends first. That's an important part too. And I have no I have no I have no independent friends of my own. Oh God! I have two questions. I know you both say the time is already wasted, so cut ties now. I don't necessarily say that, by the way, and I don't think you do necessarily either. No. We, ha we have said that. I don't think it's applicable in every situation. Um, but I want to be prepared for when we do break up and have friends 
but I do want to, sorry, but I want to be prepared for when we do break up and have friends so I don't go back to being alone with no friends. Should I try to build stronger friendships with the gals that I do know so I'm not alone when the time comes? The other question is, how do I stay part of the community uh, and racing while cutting ties with him? I'm really not sure if it is possible. The community is huge on loyalty and anyone who could help me, I met through him. Thank you for your advice. Uh, you make my Tuesday, Thursday mornings bearable. Dude. I'm teaching during the pandemic. Here's a pic of myself in the hobby. Oh, don't show me. I won't. Did you see it already? Yes. But so I, you know I'm, I'm, I'm almost afraid for you to guess right. And it'd be obvious. And to make it obvious. That I want to air Well, they're going to break up anyway. Are they? Are you telling me that you, this? For, it, it would be wrong of her to stay in the relationship for its benefits? For sure. But it's, like, it's almost not perks. It's like her life. And yeah, but I but understand it's his his friends in this sport. Like though, it sounds so um, imprisoning, almost in yeah. a way. Yeah, that, that 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 it's like working at a staying at a job you don't like because the healthcare is good and the pay. You know what I mean? Right, and it's not even the thing that sucks I guess about a it. A lot too. of people do, but no, for sure. But but it's it's worse because like he didn't do this on purpose to trap her. No, you know what I mean? Like the way like a rich guy will like make a person dependent on him and right, then right. they have no options. Uh, this girl and has picked up the hobby and loves it and met all her friends and whatever. So there's a couple of things that are important. Is it go-kart racing? Um, I, I'm not. Do you want me to say yes or no? Is it sailing? Is it one of those two? Dude, I, I, I feel guilty narrowly. Can I down. name five? Can we talk about it off the air? Can I name five and you have to tell me if I've named it? I would personally prefer not to. For the sake of this person. I mean, I, this is a brain teaser. I am... Because, dude, if if you say five and you don't get it, it's like Wordle. The sixth guess, they're going to get it, dude. You know what I mean? There's only so many things that it's this It's racing be. on the weekends. It's a small community. They requires a truck to move shit around. And then she said... This is the key clue. <laughs> She's worried of being ostracized from the shopkeepers that are that are part of this. What the fuck does that mean? It means like her boyfriend is is a big swinging dick in this community, and that if she breaks up with him, everybody will take her side. Is what she's afraid. Come on, I gotta say, Julia, which sounds reasonable. To I me. don't want to. I don't want to turn this girl out either. But uh, someone who sends an email with that many details, that was a long email. I know. It almost feels like she wants to be found out, so that her. And that's so that her dude, that's a will big assumption. She wrote, into air, a, she wrote into a podcast. It's a big assumption that she wants it. She, wouldn't she just say, I want you to? Somewhere? Fine. fine I'm just fine, saying. I'm fine, just saying. Fine. Whatever. It's very hard for me to... I, I just can't get... I, I can't get over the, the fact that this riddle is not solved. <laughs> of the sport. Do you want to just know? I, I'm sure you could guess it. You would obviously be able to guess it. All right. We'll leave that for now. Let's get back to the advice part okay, of it. Okay. <laughs> show show me show me the show me the picture. Okay, that is not even close to what I thought it was going to be. Not even close. Um That's cool. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Interesting. So my everyone's gonna, everyone's gonna be tormented. I know. Sorry, I, I'm everybody. sure there are listeners that are going to be as tormented as I was in by that whole thing. Yeah, it was as if it was as if it was a riddle. The mystery. Race. There were so many details about the sport. I know. We race on the weekends. This, 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 this is. A, I have two questions. One, what am I? <laughs> we're email edging our listeners, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have what I think is good advice, and you can tell me if you agree. Okay. Unless you have, feel strongly and you want to go first. No, you go first. I think what you have to do is attempt to create a scenario for yourself where you respectfully break up with your boyfriend, who it sounds like you have the utmost respect for. I don't know why you don't like him. You're okay. You're allowed to just be 22 and over it. There's no, that's not a crime and attempt to remain in the community because you're allowed to do that. Yeah. You're not allowed, like you're allowed to try to, to, and be like, listen, I, I understand if whatever you want me to like not come around for a little while, but I intend to be back. Like this is part of my life now too. And it would be unfair for you to take my entire life away from me. I get that I met all my friends through you. And I'm so grateful to you for that uh, because my life was terrible before I had met you. And I, I thank you so much for everything you've done for me. But like, I'm 22 and I feel I don't, I don't like want to be in this relationship anymore. 
I don't know. That's too, yeah. Let, hard. Let, let's start with this. I think I think if she if she wants to break up and thinks she has to break up with this guy, she has to do that regardless of yeah. what the implications are for her social life. Totally. I think that you, if you make that decision, I mean, the only reason not to break up with someone is because you think. Well, and it's easy to say this, but but because you think that maybe you will find a way to love them and you can repair the relationship, not because uh, you fear losing what the relationship gives you as far as ancillary benefits. Right. Um, right. Right. And, and and so if you've made that decision, then you need to find a put a way to put your best foot forward and and. Yeah. You know, I think I think yes. In an ideal world, uh, she'll still be embraced by the community. Hopefully, the ex boyfriend will be have a large enough heart that he can kind of get over it and and still be friends and eventually and, and, and welcome her into the and keep her there. Um, Even if it takes time, you know, maybe you just need to like not yeah. speak for a long time. You'll come but I would eventually. I would say that most importantly, most importantly, this girl sounds nice and liked and she needs to make some friends of her own period amen yeah um she's gotta gotta make friends away from her relationship no matter what whether that's through work or of an other hobby maybe go race in a different league or something right right i mean you can't put all of your eggs into the basket of a relationship at 22. Yeah. You cannot have your entire social network be comprised of 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 what you've been introduced to through your boyfriend. That's yeah. just it's fickle. That's too you're not going to You're leaving yourself on a on a knife's edge. Yeah. Uh, vulnerable. And that's not healthy. Not ideal. Cuz then you then you are trapped. Yeah. And it's not necessarily his fault, but like you know, I think it's a very good exercise to try to make some friends and then start researching other leagues or whatever and, yeah, you know, all of that. So I, I think start there um, and also know that the relationship is not going to be sustainable for the sake of what it gives you in your on your weekends. Yeah, totally. The thing I worry about for her a little is like, say she's able to pull this off, they break up, she's still embraced by the community. Like, where are you going to meet another guy? Like, it's going to become very yeah. heightened drama if you then just start, like, hooking up with some other guy in the community. Yeah, you might, it's going to just make your life miserable. You might start tearing the league apart. <laughs> and then everyone's going to be like, well, life, yeah. the league was all good until she came along. We know that you love this hobby, and that's great, but maybe, you know, every weekend, maybe this will be good for you. Maybe, like, you need to do other things besides your one hobby. Like, it's sounding like maybe it's too, maybe it's too much. Maybe this is a... Uh, should be eye opening, and that you should try to maybe make your life a little bit more well rounded. Wow, interesting one there. That's a that's a, a that's one, an right? interesting one. Yeah, some good stuff. Mm. Okay, one more email. Um, cool. As promised to keep these moving along. These are some rich topics. This one is called relationship crossroads. Hey, G and Francis, I've come to a pivotal crossroads in my life, and I thought that the two of you might have some advice for a simple wanderer of life like myself. I've been dating my girlfriend for two and a half years. And we've been living together for nearly two years of that time. Wow. She is 22 and I'm turning 25 in April. We're in a league together. <laughs> <laughs> she has no friends outside of the league. Uh, <laughs> Can you imagine? Uh, yeah. That's hilarious. I was just, I literally just thought that too. That's amazing, dude. Um, okay. <laughs> I won't tell you what the sport is because I'm terrified <laughs> she's going to hear this email. <laughs> Let me make this easier for you guys. Um, okay. Anyway, I don't want her to make friends outside of <laughs> who I've introduced her to. They're going to hate her. Is that actually, yeah, cut that. That's too. <laughs> that's too. <laughs> that's too. That's too. Revealing. You got to cut that one. Dude, you know what? You can actually bleep. Can you bleep it? That's funnier. Yeah. Um, that's really fucking funny. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I care about her very much. But as time has gone on, the separation in our age has become more and more apparent. Sorry, say how old he is again? 25. He's turning 25 in April, and she's 22. I have a fairly successful career in software sales and will likely be in a position to double my salary in the next 12 months. Nice. She's on the, she, on the other hand, works as a nanny twice a week and doesn't have a desire to do anything else at the moment. 
She really wants to be married soon, and I'm not sure I'm ready for that step. I'm writing because I feel that I've reached a crossroads at 25, where I realize that I want a long-term partner to start a family with, but I'm not sure my girlfriend of nearly three years is that person. She's not ambitious like me, and I think she just hopes I'll take care of her. Am I overthinking this at 25, or am I right to think that this might not be the perfect match for me? Let me know. Uh, also, you guys are the best. Blah, blah, blah. Appreciate it. Man, he really asked us if he was overthinking it, and should I just be cool and get married to her? <laughs> right. Like, do you hear what, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, totally. Like, he's worried that he shouldn't be so worried right. at 25, and it's all good that, you know, we'll get married and I'll just take care of her. Dude, you are not overthinking this. In fact, if anything, you're underthinking it. Yeah. You... That does, this does not this does not sound good. This does not sound good to me. Uh, someone who's 22 years old should not be giving up on their professional life, man or woman, with the hope that someone else will take care of them. That is way too young to have that level of sort of certainty that you're just not going to have to work. Unless you have insane family money or you're like, the hottest human being on earth <laughs> that is just ridiculous everyone has to work everyone has to work and you won't figure out if you're going to be taken care of financially until you get to a point in a relationship where the the person you're with has is making tons of money likes to do that for you and basically says like you don't have to work anymore I, I I don't I don't know what else to say. Like this this is way too young to be forced to make the decision that you're gonna have to provide for another person because they don't want to work. Someone who's 22, you're 25. No, mm -hmm. no. I I I think you need to have a conversation. Be like, listen, you need to get your ass in gear and start taking your work seriously pitching in or we're doomed because i am a self-starter and i whatever believe in this and i'm not ready to get married yet and it's going to be a while uh so that's my two cents yeah thoughts i think more importantly for me it's like your partner your your ideal partner can be whatever it is that you want them to be so you're not you're not supposed to feel bad about feeling how you feel it's right. this is an important decision. This is the person you want to be with. And if you don't like something about them, you're allowed you're allowed that. Yeah. Even if you're right or wrong or whatever the fuck, you can think whatever you want. Uh and if it's not right for you, it's not right for you and you don't have to be in it. To Francis's point, if there's a scenario that you would that would make you like her more, uh I thought, I know you say that you do like her, but I mean like if there was a scenario where she would in fact be the right partner for you, it's definitely worth discussing with uh -huh. her and being like, would you ever consider doing this or that? Right. And if she says yes, maybe you guys can figure it out. If you guys just don't, if, if you don't click with the, your future plans, it's, you shouldn't feel bad about moving on. Yeah. Agreed. You know? Yeah. This is, these are, that's a very presumptuous, um, I think, chart to present to someone at that age mm -hmm. to say like, this is how I like my life to be and how I, how I see our lives being and what do you think if i were 25 and a 22 year old girlfriend of mine said or, or whatever didn't say but it was very clear they weren't trying professionally and the expectation was well i'm just gonna marry this guy's gonna ask me to marry him soon i would be i would be terrified and i would head for the hills <laughs> that would be over quick yeah yeah. Um, yeah, dude. Get out. I mean, if you're not happy, break up with her. Yeah. Period. Done. You know? Um, all right. What's what do you got coming up, Francis? I am at Bananas Comedy Club in Rutherford, New Jersey, February eighteenth and nineteenth. New York City, April eighth and ninth. All that's at Gotham Comedy Club. All my tickets are at Francisellis dot com. Um I'm gonna be at Harpoon Harry, Panama City Beach. Uh, as well as Longboards and Panama City Beach, February 26th and 27th. Uh, tickets are on my website. 
If you can't spell my name, click in uh, my bio on my Instagram, or you can also just type juliocomedy.com, which I don't think you'll be able to spell either. And if you can, congratulations. I need to think about <laughs> how the hell I'm going to overcome this. Uh, but we appreciate you guys. Uh, we got some merch coming up in the spring. We're excited about that. And we're going to keep doing fun oops stuff. Check out our YouTube channel. We have cool original videos that are kind of like separate from the podcast of us fucking around and being funny. Uh, and I think you guys will like them. And that's all.